Um, Tracy, I think you were one of the very first um, schools or your school was one of the very first schools to apply for a quality mark um, some four years ago now, I think it was. Right. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so, so it was the um, local authorities that was working with Graham at that time um, to develop, um, you know, to raise attainment for EL learners across our borough. And um, they had invited us to take part in this um, quality mark accreditation. Um, so we done that and um, it was fantastic because um, our result was gold. So it was a case of, I think it was two other schools that were involved and it was ourselves and another school that, and I think they ended up with gold as well. So um, yeah, we just sort of went through the process, um, meeting the criteria and then self-evaluation, are we uh, silver, bronze or gold? And I think we put ourselves down as gold in most areas, apart from one, which was the governing area. Um, and I still can't say we're gold for that at this moment either. But um, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. It was a great, um, it was a very easy process as well. So yeah, fantastic. Great, great, um, great outcome for our school. Right. And um, I, I should say that um, Tracy's school is Goldington Green, which is in um, the town of Bedford. Um, and since then, since gaining gold, you've gone on to do some more work with other schools um, in your local authority. Can you say a, a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm currently working with four other schools um, under that secondment with um, Bedford Borough. Um, and we, we've just sort of going to see the first cohort go through and that will be, I think they're finalising the autumn term because of COVID, everything's been delayed. And then we will move on to the cohort two. Um, so there's already been um, interest. Right, okay. registered with the local authorities we sort of raise that awareness again that we will be um funded by by the authorities so yes we've got the interest again right now that's excellent um so I, I think one of the things at your school was that um you did a lot of work on um encouraging pupils to use their home languages to support their learning yeah, and um, did you want me to go through my PowerPoint, Shaka, now? Should, should I that would be one? great, yes. Okay, um, so Graham, are you controlling the PowerPoint? Okay, all right, great. So if we can move on. So obviously we've had the introduction. Sorry, Shaka. Okay. So we've, we've spoken really, I think we've spoken mainly about the... Um, the benefits of the EL quality map. We can run through and there's anything. So really, the, um, it's confirming your practice when we were first approached um, you know obviously you look and you think oh are we what are we are we doing a good job and, and it can be a little bit frightening because quite often you're working in isolation area um, and when you're not work networking and or sharing practice you really don't know fully is your practice what it should be apart from the research that you're doing and sort of courses that you're attending so that was a real you know confirmation affirmation of our practice was good so that made us and we was able then to become a beacon school in Bedford um, which we were very proud about um, and then moving on to that it was as I said earlier um, under the condiment from the local authority it was working with other practitioners now and building sustainability across the borough because obviously um, secondments are not um, for a long length of time. Um, I've been very fortunate. I've been working with the local authorities for the last four years and it looks like I'm going into another year. So making it five years now, which is fantastic. And in, in, in that time, my, my aim is to make sure that everybody is, um, is as successful as we have been in terms of our practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, the use of own language, um, as we go further into my slides, um, we, we've, we've um, been working on a program which you will hear about um, as we go through, which has really solved a lot of these problems. So this is the research, it tells us using the home language what it does for us, it, it, provide, you know, it provides and promotes a smooth transition between home and school, it's very important. Um, Charlotte spoke about the induction process at her school and um, you know, when, when you uh, are able to um, gather that profile that child through that background in admissions form um, these sort of things you know you, you have that included what language do that does a child speak so you're profiling them so for us at this moment we're using a particular program which I will talk about actually supports what we're doing in terms of a whole school approach and our practice 
So, and most importantly, it allows the, the pupils to demonstrate what they know. We, we, we talk about, um, you know, the iceberg effect, sort of activating um, prior knowledge. What do they know and how do we know what they know if they're not able, we're not able to communicate with them in their home language. So using the use of the second language is very, very useful. Um, and most importantly, it provides uh, um, time for them to acquire the language, you know, the, the input and output of language. Um, and quite often we know that when they arrive as new arrivals with no English, it's quite stressful. It's a very stressful time for them. And to have, again, as Charlotte mentioned earlier, all the body and systems, etc, etc, that supports it. But actually, um, you know, we still need to do our part to make sure that they're able to acquire language in a very safe um, environment without them becoming too stressed so as making it as stress-free as possible and promoting independence of course we want them to be independent that's the main that's the that's our aim at the end um, and we want to we want to show that we value their culture um, the language and and it creates a sense of belonging so within our school our environment um, represents all the different um, groups within our school and automatically when they come and we've purposely done that we've made our school very culturally inclusive the environment so when any visitors come into our school they know who belongs there you know we they know that the world is um, is welcomed in our school it's okay, moving on to the next one please next slide please Graham <laughs> thank you so how does that look in practice? So obviously, going back to the induction policy, um, we have an induction or going back induction policy and an EAL policy. Um, and in that it states the use of the home language. So class teachers are informed of this um, in terms of intervention. That's all part of it. Um, so, you know, from from the outset, these children know that it's OK for them to use that home language. It's OK because wherever they're, you know, they're able to write um, a piece of writing in their home language actually we can we can learn a lot from that writing you know do they use punctuation do they um you know how that text is um um you know is being presented um you know you know how do they form their letters that sort of thing so we can learn a lot even if we cannot understand what's been written if you're fortunate enough to have a bilingual um, member of staff in school that can translate for you then perfect but if you haven't it still tells you a lot um, planning for new arrivals, it's, um, it's important that obviously there's been you no know, all staff, um, in particular the team, understanding um, the difficulties, the barriers that they face and how to make um, lessons um, accessible for them. And an easy way what we found over the years to do that is to basically with our learning intentions to, to translate that using Google Translate. I mean, if it... You know, that's what we have to use. So we have to use that um, using Google Trans Translate tool. And that helps um, to give the child an idea of what the expectations, what are you asking me to do? And then accompanying that with visuals to support the understanding and, you know, different strategies. If it would be, um, I don't know, filling in the blanks, reordering the words, that sort of thing, matching activities. So that's for our new arrivals. We're very fortunate again with the amount of resources that we've invested heavily into this area of our school, EAL, um, and all our languages are dual languages, um, dual language resources, mainly um, for Mantra Lingra, which is useful for primary schools in particular, but we also have a range of just normal resources that we use because ultimately we want the children to learn English. So yeah, um, intervention, right. And I, the author's in the audience today and that's Caroline Scott. Um, who is the author of The Learning Village. Fantastic program, I cannot um, praise it enough. That's made my life 100% easier. And um, we're using that as part of our intervention to pre-teach um, vocabulary language structures. And it's all linked to our knowledge organizers, classroom planning. So whatever's happening in the classroom, whether they are brand new in school, um, you know, if they've arrived in year five, we're obviously giving them survival language, but we're also giving them the curriculum and it's about activating that knowledge. And how we do that is through the Learning Village, which is Caroline Scott. Um, um, she's the author of the program and I've been trying that for the last year and a half. And now I can say that we are, as a team, we are completely confident in using this program and the impact that it's had on our children and our, um, well, we can't say standards at this moment, attainment, because 
you know, based on, you know, what's happened, um, we haven't got the raw data, but we know um, things like, um, you know, the impact of their confidence, self-esteem, accessing the curriculum, um, sort of contributing class, we can see the impact on that because we run reports and to see. And this programme is absolutely fantastic because not only are you using it through um, assessment, um, the children have an opportunity to, um, to learn the, the targeted language, um, the language structure, they have a chance to practice and they go through assessment and at the end that generates a um, report um, to tell us, um, you know, how successful they were, was it 100% today, um, 98, what they were struggling with and then we can revisit that. You can move on to the next slide please, um, Graham. And this wasn't planned. I didn't realise Caroline was going to be part of this meeting. But this is an example of um, year six, I think it was, um, World War II. This is how we could present that um, information. Um, and it's very engaging. It's very child friendly. They're in this virtual world, online world and they're in this village. And it has the three strands, phonics, survival and curriculum. And it's absolutely amazing. So please do check it out. It's the... Um, learning village um just go online and have a look at it get a free trial it's, it's really worth it it's, it's fantastic so yeah that's how we're using translated um translation um the first language to support in particular our new arrivals that was really great tracy thank you for um sharing all of that um your good work at goldington green